everyone, my name is Clay and welcome to Terminally Nerdy. And today on the World Building Journal, we're going to talk about how to use the hex crawl concept to map out and build out an area. So first I need to kind of explain what a hex crawl is. And it's, it's a, a form of building a sandbox that uses hexes to kind of map out the area. So the general idea would be you would take an area, like for example that up there, and you would lay a hex grid on top of it, or you would just start with a hex grid and fill in the grids. And each grid would basically be something. So a grid may contain uh, a location, uh, it could contain just blank you know, woodland or blank plains, it might contain a town or part of a town. And you essentially use this grid, this large hex thing, to essentially build out, map out, and easily use to determine distances of a region. Now, why could you use that for world building? Well, the original idea for a hex crawl is a sandbox-styled game. So you would build out an area, the hex crawl, you would usually have like a home base somewhere for the party, and then you would leave all the hexes blank to them, but to you, you would know what they are. And as they go about, they would say, I'm moving from hex here to hex here, or hex here to hex here, they would essentially map out a region. And you would already know what's in those places. And the reason this is handy is a couple of things. First and foremost, it lets you flesh out an entire area the way you want to flesh it out, and you would easily know where everything is. And you'll know distances, because sometimes overland travel distances get a little fuzzy. If you decide that every hex is a day's worth of travel, it's very easy for them to go one, two, three, and they spend one day, two days, three days traveling. It allows you to easily tell time, and you will know what's in those hexes. So for example, if a hex has the potential for a random encounter, you could have that marked. Now this doesn't work with macro world building, that big scale world building, but it works great for micro. Even if you have a plot line and you have something that you want to explore, you have a story like you're telling them, you know, they need to travel to deliver a message from the mayor of this town to another town over here. If you have something like this over here and this is all hex gridded out, you'll know exactly how long it'll take them to make that travel. And you'll know, depending on where they go, what they could run into. So if you map out, say, an entire valley and their mission is they're starting on the edge of the valley and they need to get to the town in the center to, you know, escort this merchant caravan. You'll know what's in the entire valley. So if they decide, you know, after they get to the town that they don't want to necessarily do what you think they're going to do right away, you have a ton of adventure already pre-planned. Some of it may be a little too hard for them, and it should be. Remember, it's a living, breathing world. You know, not everything's going to be perfectly level banded. Although you can actually do that if you're smart. Like if you're building from a town here, this region right next to the town is like level 1, level 2, level 3, and you can expand outward. It lets you plan extremely effectively. And even if you're not going to run a sandbox game, you can use the building method to easily flesh out an entire region. So the players may not ever know it, but you know that the Tomb of the Fallen King is in the mountains on this particular hex over here. The players may never go over here, but you know exactly where it is, you know what's in there, and you know what they can find, and you can leave clues. Like the players, you know, are tasked to go to clean out a bandit camp. Well, the bandit camp might have a map of this mountain area over here with a couple of spots marked, and it says, you know, treasure may be in here, and they could have like a goblin cave, an orc cave, and that tomb. Well, now the players have a couple places they can go. You know what's in every one of those, and they can just decide where they want to go. It gives them agency, and you already know what the world is feeling like. You can say, well, this area here, near the, the goblins, right? Like, you know, we have this, and there's a goblin camp here. You know, the goblins kind of range out, so as they get nearer, maybe they start encountering goblin encounters in some of those hexes. It basically lets you easily map out a region. Now, again... And once you map out a region in the hex grid, let's say you map out this region here and they want to go up here. Well, you can add the hex grid, because hex grid, you know, standard size. You go click, you already have this mapped out, now you start mapping out this upper area and you start filling it in. And as you do this, you can end up with a very large world covered in hexes and you know where every single solitary thing is at any given moment. Even if you don't necessarily plan out, like you might have the Tomb of the Fallen King and up here you have the Swamp you know, the, the murky swamp, 
And over here, you've got, you know, a region owned by the, the slavers of Katash. You may not necessarily plan everything in these hexes immediately, unless they start heading that way, but you at least know that this hex area here is owned by those. And that's another thing you can actually easily uh, graph faction control. So, town is here. The town only controls the hexes around it so far. After that, it gets kind of dangerous. Maybe over in this region, there's a large forest, and it's full of giant spiders and, like, feral elves who ride them. And then down in this corner over here is a band of orcs, and the orcs don't like those elves. And you know they don't, so you mark that they sometimes get into fights, and maybe the party will run into fights between the two groups. And then they can help whichever group they want. And then over in this region here, it's just untamed wildlands. Lots of wild animals and stuff, and up in here is a swamp. You know, with like frog people. And you can easily start mapping regions. You can map relationships between those regions because you know exactly where the borders are and you'll know where the hexes split. It also is helpful for terrain. You know exactly how big the forest is. The forest is four days across by five days across. Stuff like that. It Putting things in those hexes enables you to effectively map small areas very, very well and very, very detailed. Uh, and I'm going to be doing it when I sit down to start planning my next adventure in my own world of Aether. And I'm probably going to pick an island and just hex map the island. A small island. I'm going to fill it with stuff, some ruins and things. And I'll know where every ruin is, where every unique thing is. And I'll put things in those places. So if the party decides they want to go explore over that way or they want to go explore over that way, I don't have to, like, you know, come up on the fly with what they've got. I go, okay. I know in this region there's this encounter table you know, for these hexes here, and I know these hexes are owned by, like, some crazed lizard men, stuff like that. It's it's pretty handy, but again, it only works in small scale to start with. So if you're going to start with big scale, the hex grid thing isn't going to work. Now, next time on World Building Journal, I'm not entirely certain what I was going to do, so it'll be a surprise. <laughs> uh, if you guys have any suggestions on topics you want me to cover, please leave them in the description box, or not description, comment box. Look, look, it's Saturday. Leave me be. <laughs> As always, thank you for watching. If you like what I'm doing, hit that like button. If you don't like it, feel free to hit the dislike button. Uh, feel free to subscribe if you want more stuff and support me on Patreon if you so desire. And as always, thanks for watching and remember, stay nerdy!